I'd like to welcome you to the Surprise sponsored webinar on using federated search connectors in SharePoint 2010. My name is Josh Noble and I'm co-author of the book Pro SharePoint 2010 Search. I'm also a search consultant for Surfray, uh, who's a leading provider of the Ontolica search enhancement for SharePoint. Recently I've had a lot of clients asking me how they can crawl external content sources with SharePoint 2010. And what I always find to be a bit humorous is they always believe that fast is necessary uh, to get into these content sources when in fact fast actually uses the exact same enterprise search connectors available to both SharePoint 2010 and even Search Server Express 2010. So this led me to want to expose how you can use the free search connectors available now in SharePoint uh, to, to search external content sources that they can be leveraged in SharePoint. Since this is similar to the subject of also crawling external content sources, I'm also going to show you how to set that up as well. To demonstrate SharePoint's ability to access some unique content sources, uh, I'll show you how to set up two different types of connections. First off, we're going to look at how to, uh, how to crawl uh, or how to do federated search to YouTube. And this is very similar to how you do federated searches out to Bing, for example. And there's quite a, no a number of federated search connectors that have all be already been created. And I'll give you a list of those later. And then we're going to look at how we can uh, crawl uh, public exchange folders and bring that content right into SharePoint so that SharePoint can search that. I know these two different connectors are, are just the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you can crawl with SharePoint, but they do show a very different uh, way of connecting to content. And they'll provide a, a great platform for, as an example for you to move forward with using other different types of connections. So I promise not to be too uh, dependent here on slides, but I do want to show you the difference between how uh, the two different connection types that we're going to look at actually uh, retrieve queries. So to search YouTube, you're going to use a, a free federated search connector that's available through, uh, through Microsoft. And in this approach, SharePoint will actually pass the user search query off to YouTube search engine for processing and then return the results it finds. So SharePoint's actually not doing the, uh, the index process uh, or actually doing the search process at this point. Users are just entering a search into SharePoint. It's passing off that request to YouTube. YouTube is handling the whole search process there and then it's passing back those results as a set of RSS results back into SharePoint for you to be able to view. This is a bit different than when you index or, or when you actually crawl external content sources into SharePoint. When we're using a exchange and when we're crawling exchange we're actually crawling that information directly to SharePoint. So, so SharePoint is actually going in to Exchange, crawling that content, creating an index for itself, and pulling that back into SharePoint. And that's a little different in that SharePoint then can then use that information from Exchange uh, for, for refiners, for uh, different sort of advanced search fields, and it will actually mesh them into the actual search results. I mean, it, it treats it just as if that content was located in SharePoint. So at this point, let's jump into a, into a test server so I can actually show you how to set these things up. So now I'm in my demo server. And I do want to point out up front uh, that we will be, when we're making these connections, it does require some significant privileges in SharePoint. So I would recommend that everything that you do, that you do with the farm admin account for your SharePoint portal. Uh, if you don't have access to your farm admin account, at a minimum, you do need to have admin access uh, for the search service application. So to use any of the free uh, enterprise search connectors uh, for SharePoint, Fast, or Search Server, uh, you first need to download the open search description file. Uh, in many of the pre-made ones can be found uh, here at this particular URL. 
And we also put a list of these with our webinar recording and at our tech blog at surfray.com. So what I actually find interesting is that you can use any open source compliant search connection in, in within SharePoint and not just the ones that you find here that have been pre-made at this at this uh, this location Robert actually wrote an article all about this that can be found uh, on our tech blog as well so usually I would go and just download the connectors uh, from this list but when we were testing this we found that Microsoft actually needs to update uh, the YouTube connector and if you're watching the recording of this uh, they might have updated that already but uh, because the RSS values for the YouTube value have changed since they uploaded this particular connector uh, that we're finding at this time uh, there's actually issues when it's trying to pull back images. Uh, it works to actually access YouTube as a content source, but the images it returns, uh, it, well, it doesn't return any, any images at all, and you'll see why that's important later. So uh, this could actually be updated manually uh, following Robert's article on the subject. But fortunately, Robert's actually already done this for us, and so I've already downloaded a new ODST file uh, that can be found uh, from his, his post. So I'm just going to use the file that Robert's already, uh, already created for us. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to uh, Central Admin. I'm backing up here, uh, just showing you the path that I'm going to need to go through. First, I'm going to start with manage uh, application management, and I'm going to uh, go to manage service applications. Now I'm going to choose my search service application. And what we're doing at this point is actually just uh, you, uh, uploading uh, the file to make the federated connection. So here I'm going to go to federated locations that you can find here on the left hand side. And I see a list of the federated locations that I already have set up. In this case we already have a file uh, that is going to allow us to connect to this new federated location. So instead of creating a new location I'm actually just going to import the location. And I'll find that file here. I can actually, uh, I already threw it onto my desktop. Oh, actually, I want that one. I'll select that. And I will click OK. And then done. So at this point, uh, we see that uh, we've set up the YouTube file. Now, uh, I have used this before, so we do see that this has some, some queries that have pre previously been associated with it. But uh, at this point, the connection has now been established to YouTube, but I'm not actually showing anything to my users yet when they go to the search center. So I need to actually uh, give them something to see. So now I'm just going to jump into my uh, my home page of my SharePoint portal because I want to be able to uh, to manipulate this search center here. So here I'm on my home page and I want to actually work with my enterprise search tab here. And I need to get to the search results page so why don't I just enter a search. And here I want to be able to now um, add some, some federated locations here for, uh, for YouTube. So I'm going to edit the page. And there's two different ways that I can present these federated locations. Uh, first off, I can, uh, I can edit the, the top federated results web part. And this is uh, usually deployed by default uh, within SharePoint 2010. But right now, it's not showing any results because it's not, uh, not set up for any federated locations. And what this is going to do is work a lot like best bets. It's just going to provide me with a top uh, couple suggestions from my federated uh, location. So first off, let me set that up. So I'm going to edit that particular web part. I'll jump here and for this location, we know we want to use YouTube. And I can make several other settings here. If I wanted to show additional results here, I could do that. Um, there's some other additional things I can manipulate, but uh, let's just make the connection for now so we'll apply that click OK 
And once I check that back in, that'll start working. Actually, you can see it's already starting to work right here. And then there's one other web part that I want to show you with uh, with federated results, and that goes here on the right the right hand zone. So here to use the uh, the federated results web part, I'm going to add a web part. I'm just going to go find my search web parts. I want my federated results web part. I'll just add that. And we'll see by default here it's set up for, for Bing, but I don't want Bing to come back. I want YouTube. So again, I'm going to just edit this web part. And we just need to change the location this is pulling from to YouTube. And if you've set up other federated locations, you'd see these on those on the list as well. And just like all the other web parts, uh, you do have additional display properties, you know, how many results you have come back, for example. But we'll just do this. Click OK. Now that results web part is, uh, is working here, and I just need to check my page back in so that my users are actually going to be able to, to get this experience. So here we'll notice that, let's do another search. I'm getting a top result hit here for, uh, for the, the most popular uh, YouTube result for this particular query. We'll also notice that I have some, some additional results over here. Uh, and these are coming back from those two different web parts. Uh, this being the top federated results web part, if this is how you want to display uh, your federated results, and this coming from the actual uh, web part that's called federated uh, federated results. Now, I mentioned that Robert did a little edit uh, to that particular file that we're using to make this connection, and what that did was actually allow these images to appear. Uh, it, they should have appeared by default using the standard uh, federated connector for YouTube that Microsoft provided, but the, the RSS feed that was coming back for this was not properly pulling back uh, these results. It's been updated since Microsoft has, has released that connection. So uh, that connector that Robert made uh, is, going, is making these, video, these pictures be able to come through, and I'll show you again where to grab that from. Um, in just a bit. So um, now that we're at this point, uh, let's take a look at how we can get uh, federated results or external content to be crawled into into SharePoint, and let's see how we can do that specifically with Exchange folders.